The internet has seemingly gone bananas over Pro Raw. I'm hearing that it's rendered all other file formats obsolete. I'm hearing it's a monumental thing for photography, blah, blah, blah. But Pesico Mao is staying cool about it. So welcome, let's talk about God Raw. I mean, Pro Raw, but yeah, judging by the hype, it may as well be called God Raw at this point. But today I'm gonna to cut through all of that hyperbole and show you exactly what it's like to shoot and edit Pro Raw. So you can see exactly what its strengths and weaknesses are, who it's for and where it fits in to the iPhone photography ecosystem. I'm not going to discuss too much about why Pro Raw does what it does exactly, because if I did, I'd be stopping the video every five seconds to go into a technical deep dive. So I'm going to focus more on the end result, what it actually means for you as an iPhone photographer and how it could affect your photography. So let's start with the shooting experience. For the first time with DNG, what you see on the viewfinder is actually what you're going to get. Now, Hike and JPEG users will be used to this, but it will be a pleasant surprise for raw shooters because it means a more even exposure right out of the gate and not having to scrutinously dial in your settings. And I don't even think scrutinously is a word, but it should be. Here's a pro raw file straight out of the camera. This was just how it looked when I was taking it. Here's the JPEG and here's the raw file taken at the same settings with the sky and the buildings completely blown out. Looking good so far, but if you don't want to miss a moment, keep in mind that Pro Raw files can take up to three seconds to process. Unsurprisingly, Apple's built-in camera app is the most efficient because it allows you to keep shooting while the files process in the background. The camera will slow down a bit while you're tapping the shutter, but at least you can keep going. A lot of third-party camera apps though won't let you take another photo until the current one has finished processing. Now, surprisingly, Captain Crashtastic itself, the Moment app, was handling these files the best. It was getting through them really fast and I was suspicious. So I went in and I saw that their Pro Raw files seemed to be much lower quality and look much worse than all the others. I had a look in the settings, nothing there to indicate that I was gonna get lower quality. It produces the same file size and there's nothing from Moment themselves on their App Store listing or on Twitter, so hey. <laughs> no comment from me, I'm just letting you know. And more on this later when I talk about editing, but just be aware that different apps may display your Pro Raw files with varying levels of tone mapping. Now tone mapping is one of the key ingredients in Pro Raw and you can see without it, the Pro Raw file looks much closer to a traditional Raw file. So what about people like me who like to use manual settings? Well, your actual image contains different parts from multiple different exposures. So the results can be unexpected, inconsistent, and you can never actually be sure which settings the final photo was taken at. For example, this one was shot at 1 220th of a second, and this one was shot at 1 1 20th of a second. Same ISO, same aperture, yet the brightness levels don't correlate at all. The same thing here, this image was shot at 1 900th of a second, and this one at 1 230th of a second, so it should be two stops brighter. But it's not. So with Pro Raw, manual settings and exposure guides like histograms and zebras just aren't what they once were. But they're not obsolete because you still need them if you want to create a raw long exposure, like this for example, and they can still affect image quality if you're not careful. Here's a Pro Raw photo taken with Halide at ISO 32 at 1 1000th of a second. Nice and clean, looking good. And here is the same composition taken at ISO 800 at 1 71,000th of a second, which is the maximum shutter speed of the iPhone 12 Pro. And, oh dear. <laughs> that 1 71,000th of a second shutter speed probably was the cause of this because as you'll see, Pro Raw is actually a low light monster. Even without night mode, Pro Raw files usually look really good in low light, especially in urban environments with brick and metallic surfaces. Except sometimes, they don't look so hot because there's so much computational stuff going on in the background, you can never really be sure why. Maybe it decided not to take as many exposures for this one. Maybe Deep Fusion was turned off. 
Who knows? <laughs> but what I do know is that the best way to guarantee a great exposure in low light is with night mode. Night mode gives Pro Raw files a level of low light performance that is just eons ahead of traditional Raw files. So if low light is your thing, then you should see a bump in image quality and in editing potential with Pro Raw, especially on a tripod when you can expose for as long as 30 seconds. And I think traditional Raw files are sorely missing out on the ability to expose for longer than one second. With access to HDR3, it really shines in more general situations with much larger exposure ranges as well. It looks more natural and more realistic than Hike and JPEG. And it has an advantage over RAW where you'd have to either bracket or choose between exposing for your shadows or your highlights. As for the details, well, Pro RAW files look processed. Because they are but it's to, it's to varying degrees. Sometimes they look processed in a really good way. Again, in urban environments, they're smooth, they're sharp and detailed with great colors. But sometimes the processing just doesn't look so hot with more natural textures in particular, like grass and hair and woodland, often looking mushy and just not as fine and as natural as they could, especially compared to traditional RAW files. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's no slider to adjust. There's no setting to turn down. The iPhone's gonna process your images how it thinks they should be processed. However, processed as they may be, Pro RAW files are still 12 bits with 14 stops of dynamic dynamic range and between around 25 to 30 megabytes of data, which gives them lots of flexibility when it comes to editing exposure, if it needs to be edited at all. So if I decide I want to bring these shadows up, there's data there. Highlights down, there's data there too, just like in a RAW file. And something pretty cool is how you can now edit both Pro RAW files and regular RAW files in the Photos app. So if you're not yet ready for third-party apps, then Apple's got both your shooting and your editing experience covered. Speaking of third-party apps though, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's still a bit of a wild west. It's still a bit of a mixed bag with how they handle the files. Both Darkroom and Raw Power seem to be in the best shape of all and should offer you the best experience. What's interesting and probably the most confusing and frustrating thing for most users is that even though Adobe invented the DNG format and they worked directly with Apple, Apple drawing Pro Raw's development, Adobe products are currently offering the worst Pro Raw editing experience because they don't apply any tone mapping whatsoever. So it's like you're editing the original DNG. And one final thing about editing before I wrap up, be aware that if you shoot with a reduced bit depth in Halide, then this can happen. Oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> So Pro Raw then, I've laid out my experience and hopefully given you some realistic expectations of the format and how it could affect your iPhone photography going forward. So what do I think of the format? Is it for me? Well, you could probably tell from the introduction that I'm nowhere near as excited about it as others. And that's because, well, I feel like there are some great benefits to Pro Raw, absolutely. But for me, there's just too much compromise to get there and it's not worth it. For example, in order to benefit from a more even exposure and noise reduction, I have to hand over control to HDR3 and Deep Fusion, and I don't want to. If creative control over my photos means noise and a much less even exposure, then that's my problem. So I'll be sticking with my RAW files, but of course, if and when Pro RAW gets an update, I will definitely check it out and reevaluate. So what do you think of Pro RAW? Has it affected your photography? Has it been overhyped? Has it been underhyped? Either way, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay curious, and azibuna.